Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let's um, continue the discussion on axial flow compressor. So, what uh, we are uh, middle of the discussion is the design concept. So, we have been talking about different parameters like uh, design parameters and the impact of these parameters. So, and how you change different parameters for the design consideration. So, just in conceptual design, this is where we are talking about that uh, different indirect uh, method. So, these are uh, starting with your quasi 3 D analysis and then uh, you do experimental analysis and finally, the off design performance analysis. Now, the first step which is the quasi 3 D analysis that starts with a 2 D analysis and which is essentially the uh, 2D analysis means the axial tangential and then extended to define the flow properties at different station, blade height and then with those information move to the 3D analysis. So, there are these are the things that we have already discussed. Now, some of the parameters that we can talk about or rather the choice of data. So, let us say one of them would be the speeds or speed criteria. So, what could be the criteria for those speed and all these things. So, this is uh, from different experiments and the previous existing experience one can determine the maximum speed. For example, the tip speed could be around somewhere 350 meter per second and then the axial velocity could be of 150 to 200 meter per second. So, these are again these parameters are not uh, rigid number or fixed number because different engine to engine this number can vary, but these are some of the uh, sort of typical values that are used for design and all these purposes. Okay. Now, the second one is the half tip ratio that means this xi. So, the typical value of xi which is R h to R t would be 0 0.4 to 0 0.6. So, at inlet this xi is greater than 0 0.3 and at outlet this xi is less than 0 0.9. And if you think about fan for fan this guy would be somewhere 0.2. So, these are the some of these um, values which could be taken. Now, third Mach number. So, that is another one. So, the axial Mach number is 1. So, axial Mach number which M A would be of 0 0.5 typical high subsonic. Now, there are relative Mach number, relative Mach number. So, in that case at tip uh, it would be less than 1.2 for this is also for high pressure ratio PRC compressor. 
or rather HPC and for fan M tip would be less than 1.8 okay. and at hub the M 1 hub this would be less than 0 0.9. So, this also depends on the engine because the aero engine which is whether the supersonic or hypersonic flight depends on that and also the inlet um, temperature depends on all this. So, the, the Mach number value suggested here which develops unaffordable stresses in the blade. So, consequently these values are drastically reduced even to half its suggested value or alternatively specify values from the mill blade and axial speeds which can be deployed. Let us say for the first stage the flow is axial, so V 1 would be V z, then we can calculate the Mach number, so V 1 would be gamma T 1 which is M 1 gamma R T naught 1 plus 1 m square. So, similarly the relative speed at the blade tip which can be calculated W 1 is the m 1 rel gamma R T naught 1 m square. Now, the rotational speed can be calculated then W 1 tip square minus B 1 square which is M 1 re square at tip minus M 1 square gamma R T naught 1 by 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 M square. So, the outer diameter and the rotation speed which are connected like u t 2 pi n. So, if either the tip speed or the rotational speed is specified, so then the half tip ratio is calculated from the equation of the mass flow rate equation or the rather continuity equation m dot equals to rho 1 v z 1 a which is rho 1 pi r t square minus r h square. So, this is 1 minus m dot rho 1 v z 1 pi r t square. So, once we get this you can calculate the density also like v 1 equals to v z 1 t 1 equals to t naught 1 minus v 1 square by 2 C p equals to p naught 1 t 1 by t naught 1 gamma by gamma minus 1. So, from here you get the density rho 1 equals to p 1 by r t 1. So, once you do that, but at the same time one has to put an check on half tip ratio because this has to be within the allowable limit. So, here one has to make a call like the type of variation of the compressor passage and its successive stage or one can decide whether the compressor will have constant mean or constant tip or constant half radius all the stages. So, Having said that the next to determine the outlet uh, dimensions of the compressor assuming the stage efficiency or the polytropic efficiency of the compressor and then we can look at those things like T naught 1 would be P naught 2 by P naught 1 which is n minus 1 by n where n minus 1 by n is connected 1 by eta s into gamma minus 1 by gamma where eta s is stage efficiency or 
here. Now, assuming the air leaves the stator of the last stage of the compressor axially, so then the outlet station of the compressor, let us say 2 is outlet, so we can write V2 equals to Vz equals to V1. So, the static pressure can be estimated as T naught 2 minus V2 square by 2 C P and P2 is P naught 2 T 2 by T naught 2 gamma by gamma minus 1. So, the density also can be calculated which is P 2 by R T 2 and A 2 would be mass flow rate by rho 2 V z 2. Now, if the constant mean radius option is selected, then the mean radius is already known and the blade height at the outlet is also can be calculated like h would be a 2 by 2 pi r m and the tip radius would be r m plus h by 2 and r r would be r m minus h by 2. So, these are tip radius and root radius or the half. Now, then the compressor efficiency is related to the polytropic stage efficiency which would be eta c pi c gamma minus 1 by gamma minus 1 pi c gamma minus 1 by eta s minus 1 where if you recall from the cycle analysis this is the overall pressure ratio. So, you can find out that thing. So, that is once you have that you can now go on finding the or rather determine number of stages. So, here one has to assume the assuming stage efficiency. So, by assuming stage efficiency one can, so to determine or rather to obtain the number of stages the overall temperature rise within the compressor is first determined which is delta T compressor is T naught 2 minus T naught 1 and secondly the stage temperature is also determined and then divide both the values to obtain the number of stages. So, now what will happen to the stage temperature? The rise of the step temperature can be find out T delta T naught which is U V z by C p tan beta 1 minus tan beta 2. Now, we can have the relative velocity ratio or which is uh, uh, ratio of relative velocity or call the Haller number. So, this is represented at d h number which is w 2 by w 1. Then what we can write d h r is cos beta 1 by cos beta 2 sec beta 1 by sec beta 2 1 plus tan beta 2 square tan beta 1 square. Since tan beta 2 is d square 1 plus tan beta 1 square minus 1. So, my 
stage temperature rise would be u v z by C p tan beta 1 minus uh, d h square into 1 plus tan beta 1 square minus 1. So, this is what you get. Now, as a guide vein, the temperature rise per stage for the available compressor can have the typical fall range like for example, delta 2 A should be 10 to 30 Kelvin for subsonic stages this could be 45 to 55 Kelvin for transonic stage and delta T s would be always 80 Kelvin for supersonic range. And then we can find out the number of stages like which is n equals to delta T naught for the compressor divided by of stage. So, this will give us the number of stages. So, this will give you an idea how many stages you require. Now, once you calculate that, then one can calculate the air angles for each stage. So, these are at the mean section, this calculation at the mean section and find out the air angle. So, once you have let us say for um, a constant mean diameter and once you and known axial and mean blade speed that means, this is known V z and U m. So, one can find out the angles of alpha 1, beta 1, alpha 2 and beta 2. So, this can be for each stages these are uh, values can be calculated and also will be, uh, the degree of reaction would be calculated and then check whether that is in uh, acceptable range or not. So, let us start with let us say first stage. So, the first stage is characterized as the flow is also axial. So, alpha would be 0. So, the relative velocity would be u m square plus v z square where tan beta 1 would be u m by v z. Now, we can for simplicity we can write that u m now since everything is in mean radius we can replace that with the u ok. So, now the absolute angle at the rotor outlet would be tan alpha 2 which is u by v z minus tan beta 2. Now, this is also the inlet angle to the stator and the outlet angle of the stator would be alpha 3 which uh, can be calculated from the this ratio V 3 by V 2 which is cos alpha 3 which is known as again the LR number d h. So, now the value of this the LR number has to be selected or something assumed or if this is not reasonable, you can see this is a ratio of cos alpha to cos alpha 3, then the values could be completely imaginary. Okay. So, one has to satisfy that DHS has to be cos alpha 2. So, that cos alpha 3 is cos alpha 2 by DHS. Now, now, we can calculate the stage uh, temperature rise. 
so that is uh, delta um, t naught s which is lambda u m v z tan beta 1 minus tan beta 2 by C p here lambda is uh, work done factor. Okay. So, now at different stages let us say first, second, third, fourth there could be different values of lambda. So, using these values now one can find out the temperature rise across the stages and once that is then from here you get delta T naught S and once you get that then you move to calculate the pressure ratio for the stage phi S would be P naught for stage which is 1 plus eta S delta T naught 1 by T naught 1 gamma minus 1 and degrees of reaction is calculated like V z by 2 u tan beta 1 plus tan beta 2. So, whatever uh, the equation system that we have derived for the stage dynam uh, dynamics that all of them are in use for calculation of all this. Now, this is first stage. Now, from stages 2 to n minus 1. So, stages 2 to n minus 1, so that uh, you can follow this procedure. First, the um, inlet total conditions to any stage, let us say i, can be calculated P naught 1 stage i is P naught 1 stage i minus 1 into P naught 3 by P naught 1 stage i minus 1. And similarly, T naught 1 for stage i is T naught 1 for stage i minus 1 plus delta T naught 1 for stage i minus 1. So, that essentially the T naught 1 for that plus the delta T. Second, the flow is no longer axial, but the outlet angle alpha 3 of any stage will be equal to the inlet absolute angle alpha 1. So, what one can write is that uh, alpha 1 for stage i is alpha 3 for stage i minus 1. So, that is what you get. Then third the inlet relative angle that beta 1 can be calculated. So, to calculate beta 1 we need tan beta 1 which is u by v z minus tan alpha 1. So, that is what you get when you get to the beta 1. Now, once you get beta 1 the outlet relative angle that is beta 2 can be obtained. So, by using the del r number this can be obtained. So, then you have beta 1 and beta 2 then the absolute outlet angle alpha 2 can be calculated like tan alpha 2 is u by b z minus tan beta 2 and by that time we already have the beta 2 known. So, that is can be done then the state temperature rise which is T naught S this can be calculated. So, once we 
by using some approximate work done factor. And then the stage pressure ratio that is pi s which can be calculated. Then at 8 degree of reaction is calculated, then 9 for approximate DLN number for stator that is calculated, this is for stator and then the stator outlet angle alpha 3 which can be calculated. So, alpha 3 which is a stator outlet angle. So, all the angles then calculated. So, this particular procedure of uh, 1 to 10, these are repeated for all the stages till the last stages except the last stages. Now, when you go to last stage, then what we get? Then first thing is that the pressure um, ratio at the last stage that needs to be calculated, though first thing that we calculate is the pressure ratio at the last stage, which is pi c by uh, 1 to n minus 1 pi i. That means, the pressure ratio of the last stage is calculated from the overall pressure ratio of the compressor and the product of the pressure rise which is uh, obtained in the till the previous stages. Then the corresponding temperature rise needs to be calculated. So, T naught for the last stage which is T naught 1 last divided by eta s pi last gamma minus 1 by gamma minus 1. So, then once we do this, then we calculate the beta 1. So, and the beta 1 we can calculate like this tan beta 1 and uh, the relationship for tan beta 1 and beta 2. And once we get beta 1, we calculate beta 2 like tan beta 2 is tan beta 1 C p delta T naught by lambda u v z, where the outlet blade angle is obtained. Okay. Now, here also we have to check for uh, d Heller number of rotor, d Haller number for the rotor. So, we will check that and once that is done, then the outlet absolute angle can be calculated. So, alpha 2 can be calculated. Already we have estimated that, how to estimate the uh, these things and then we get degrees of reaction and finally, we get the alpha 3. So, that is how and once we get that, we can uh, cross check the DLN number and all this what we have uh, taken into consideration. Now, this is how all the flow angles which are there from the, so the whole idea is that we uh, have to calculate. So, given the known quantities like the axial velocity and the mean uh, velocity, we need to calculate all the flow angles like alpha 1, beta 1 and the degrees of reaction and all this. Just to do that, we go stage by stages. So, first we do the first stage where we calculate all the parameters and uh, once we calculate all the parameters, we obtain the data for the first stage and we calculate all these angles and then we move to the 2 to n minus 1 that means subsequent stages 
uh, first stage calculations we do independently, then using those data uh, we do this calculation for the latter stages till n minus 1. And once we carry out all this, so we obtain all the data for the and then with those data we move to the last stage, where last stage uh, pressure ratio, last stage temperature rise and using those data we get beta 1, we get beta 2 and also we check the de Helland number for the rotor and we get alpha 2 degrees of reaction and finally, alpha 3. So, this is how we get all these angles for the different stages. Okay. Now, we can also uh, this is what uh, we uh, do to get first stage, second stage onwards till the last but one stage and the last stage. So, we will stop here and continue the discussion in the next lecture.